<gasps> Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> Stick your fingers in your ears in five, four, three, two, one. Yes, you are listening to the Mind Compression Show here on CGSR 88.5 FM, and that was Dying Fetus with Institutions of Deceit off of their 2003 album Stop at Nothing. I decided to play that because I've been listening to that album nonstop in my car, and I thought it was safer to play it here on the radio than actually in a moving vehicle. So... Um, welcome to the show. I have a very special guest on my show today. I have Joshua Green. Welcome, Josh. Hi, thanks a lot. Hey, no problem. And you, I was looking back at the documents. I think you came last year, kind of right before Christmas time. Okay, yeah. So it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. Almost been a year. Yes, I'm glad to be back, though. That's, That's awesome. good. And let's kind of update people a little bit, uh, what you do at the U of A and the connection uh, with heavy metal music. Yeah, um, so... I'm a master's anthropology student, and I came uh, to the university with the uh, uh, proposal for research that was basically inspired by the Faroe's metal band called uh, Tuir, or Tyr. And uh, I was interested in how they're mixing traditional music with popular music, i.e. heavy metal. They're like a 
pretty famous Viking metal band, like mm -hmm. Prague Viking metal. Um, so I, that's what I was first interested in, and then I started to learn more about Fairies music, and I uh, decided to do a project in, that was in generally focused on the uh, reframing of traditional music within within popular music. And there's a couple metal bands who do it, not just to, uh, in, oh, okay. in the Faroe Islands. Oh, so. perfect. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's what I was investigating. <laughs> and obviously, we'll talk a little bit later on the show because you just came back mm. the, from the Faroese Islands, mm -hmm. and uh, you're doing you're interviewing Tier. Mm, um, I uh, met one of the guys, and I have uh, I'm yet to do an interview with the guy oh. it's set up. So yeah, with perfect. One, one of the guys. Yeah. Are you gonna do it like via Skype? Yeah, yeah. we're gonna do an online yeah. sort of thing. Technology <laughs> is to your advantage in this case. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but just generally, what have you been up to? Uh, maybe this can be more than just research that you've done. So what have you been up to in the last year? So since you've come on the show from last. Oh, man. Um, really, what I've been doing is it's it's pretty uh, pretty nerdy, maybe. But I've just <laughs> mostly been like preparing to go to the islands, right? Like writing all these proposals and mm -hmm. getting research funding from lots of great people here at the university and uh, the like, provincial government, federal government, and stuff like that. Lining everything up to mm -hmm. go, and then also getting in contact with all the musicians and the pharaohs. So my, I would like to talk about something other than research <laughs> I've been doing, but it's really really been pretty nerdily all like getting ready to go yeah. there to the islands, right? So. Pretty I think much, that's what happens yeah. when you become a, a, a master student is mm -hmm. that you're just, you know, pretty much, uh, don't mind the phrasing, balls deep in the research. Yeah. And essentially, uh, you don't escape it until you're done. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it is. But hopefully something good will come out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm on the radio right now. That's pretty good. You know, that is pretty good. <laughs> and you've had, you know, I don't know anyone else who's been to the Faro Faroese Islands. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Faro oh, Faroe Islands. Faroe or, Islands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anyone else. That's a pretty okay. unique opportunity to go there and explore. Cool, yeah. <laughs> and in what ways do you think that, like, obviously your initial proposal was looking at certain elements of music, traditional and popular music, but in what ways has your research maybe changed along the way, or has it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's changed because I really, I didn't know the scene so well coming from the outside, never having visited the islands or even talked to anybody from the pharaohs. So, like, at first I just had this impression that, you know, Tier Toyer was the biggest band that came from the pharaohs, and I didn't know what the musical map looked like there, and I didn't know what I was going to encounter. So, mm -hmm. like, although I had, of course, like, plans for my research, the direction it would take before, um, when I went there, things changed a lot because I actually got involved in, like, the community, especially the heavy, the heavy metal community which has like really been growing in the last 10 years or so I think awesome. probably inspired and driven by um, the success of Toyota who are touring internationally and mm -hmm. stuff so yeah so there's been um, it's changed to encompass more than just uh, more than just uh, Tier Toyota um, and so I've got to know all the other metal bands there and I'm trying to learn um, I'm trying to get a picture of the entire music scene mm -hmm. and metal is actually an important part of it because they're the guys who I really I feel like I get to know the best and that's awesome yeah, so. and that really positions Tier within a metal context right they're mm -hmm. not just out there they're not the only band right they're kind of working within a system yeah absolutely uh, so that's really interesting okay and we will definitely talk more about Thanks. your research i find this very very interesting and fantastic that this can be done at the u of a Me too. um <laughs> <laughs> and you have funding which is excellent yes. that means people are supporting metal and supporting you doing uh you know researching it and um investigating it yeah, absolutely so we'll continue on i brought other um some tunes that, uh, you know, I just randomly picked up and there's also some new stuff here at CJSR. So I'm going to start off um, a set with some, I guess, newer Dismember 2004 stuff. So I guess you could say it's fairly new. Uh, this is off of their album, Where Iron Crosses Grow. This is the song Tragedy of the Faithful here on the Mind Compression Show, CJSR 88.5 FM.
And we're back. And that was Unleash the Archers with Astral Annihilation off of their new album, Demons of the Astro Waste. Um, excellent band. Uh, female th- fronted, I guess, like melodic thrash death metal. I don't really know how to categorize them in categories or just, you know, tripe. So, um, but they're from Vancouver. They're excellent. Uh, whenever they come to town, you should go check them out. Excellent stuff. And then at the top of the set, we heard Dismember with Tragedy of the Faithful off of their album, Where Iron Crosses Grow. Another one of my favorite bands. And then we heard Pig Destroyer. Matthew from last week wanted to hear uh, some of those guys. And really, I haven't, you know, I don't really play those guys very often. So we heard Thumbsucker off of their album Terrifier. Crazy grindcore. All, like, very spastic, very um, eccentric. So excellent. Okay, and again, I have a special guest, Josh Green, here with me this afternoon. And so uh, we were talking about the ways in which your research has transformed. Obviously, you're looking at tier. Uh, what's mm. the the translation of tier? Oh, I always said tier too, but when I get over there, I try to say it like I heard people saying it in the pharaohs, which is like tuir. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, I can't do it either. If anybody's listening, they're probably laughing right now. But yeah. No, they're not. Don't <laughs> worry. It's okay. <laughs> and so you were there for how long? Uh, I stayed there for three months from the 1st of August to the end of, no wait, uh, yeah, August, September, October. Yeah. Wow. End of October. And you said that you stayed in a hostel the whole time? Yep, yep, I did, yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, a hostel in the capital city called Torsham, like Thor something. It comes from the word Thor, like you can Neat. see, obviously. Yeah. yeah. All those <laughs> cool connections. <laughs> but anyway, nerdy connections, I should say. Um, yeah, I stayed in the hostel there. In That's the cool. Very nice, yeah. And so what were some of your experiences? Now, this you only kind of interviewed one member of Tier, but what were your overall kind of impressions of, of the island? Um, I thought um, a really interesting thing about the music scene there, and this goes for the metal scene as well, is that um, there's about there's only about 50,000 um, people who live in the islands. Um, wow. That's like the, the population of the country, even mm-hmm. if there are people spread elsewhere in Denmark and stuff um, and all over. But there is, I think, a really amazing amount of music and a really amazing amount of professional sounding music that comes out of such a, uh, such a small place. Okay. Yeah, so like the, and the metal scene, for instance, most of the metal bands like are from the capital called okay. Torshom and there's something like 19,000 people there in the surrounding area as well so wow and you get a good number of metal bands you know who have pretty pro albums who come out of there so like they to have the fact that they actually I think nowadays have a scene and there is a metal scene mm-hmm. or movement there is it's pretty impressive in a, a country that tiny but um, they have a pretty pretty strong following and they have made some really pro stuff that they're on label as well so oh wow yeah, oh, that's really neat and really did you just stay in the capital or did you kind of travel elsewhere? Oh, I definitely traveled around. Um, to oh, meet. Did it take very long to travel? No, not no. really. And the old days, they uh, <laughs> like, well, not that long ago, only 30 years ago, sometimes they, um, of course, you had to take boats everywhere between the 18 or so islands that oh, people wow. live on. Oh, wow. Huh. But yeah, nowadays they have like this really awesome road system with tunnels that go under the ocean to connect what? islands and stuff. It's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. So yeah, it's convenient. It's not so hard. They just take a bus now. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the Faroes Islands is like a, kind of the mainland and then there's more multiple islands kind of surrounding it yeah it's like all the um there's like a couple like larger islands mm-hmm. which you, you could quarter, sort of call the mainland i guess but the other the other islanders might not like that but there's yeah <laughs> there's like the main island with a capital okay and there's also the, it's called stramoy and there's uh, the next island over esteroy and then there's a bunch of northern islands which people call the northern islands oh, they all have okay. their own names of course and then some small little islands with like maybe one village on it or one house in one case and stuff like that yeah. wow some You'll find some really, really out of the way, really isolated places. Mm-hmm. That's super interesting. Yeah. And that can be different for us, like especially living in Edmonton, right? Such a yeah. populated um, city. So yeah. what were maybe some of the similarities and differences between living in Canada and then going overseas there? Mm, yeah. Um, like, even though I was living in a, in the capital, right? It's like the, the biggest place in the Faroes. It's like, for Canada, it would be like a really small place. Like, you know, 20,000 or less is yeah. quite small, like, especially if you compare it to a place like Edmonton. Mm-hmm. So I thought one of the most interesting things was that as soon as you travel out of the capital, you really get to see the difference between the sort of urban lifestyle that people live, are able to live in the, in the capital there where you have mall and uh, movie theater and clubs and all that stuff, you know? And then um, when you go outside the city, 
I was in at a time that it was like it was haying season, so you could go to the small villages and just drive through, and there's you know kids like families cutting hay, turning hay, and stuff like that. Huh. It's just different, from, yeah. You know, like unless you're from a farming community here, right? You don't mm-hmm. usually see that. So, and then I was also there for like sheep, the sheep call, sheep killing time or whatever. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and it's totally metal. Yeah, yeah. Sheep killing time. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty rugged. So you know, there's like people, <laughs> old farmers, up on the mountains driving sheep down. And stuff oh like that. wow. So it's pretty. It's pretty uh, rugged. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. So that was different. Like. And so you were obviously kind of focused more on the metal scenes. You were talking to people in the community, mm. uh, people who were in bands and even just feds. But you brought some metal with you today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Faroese metal. Yep, yep. And so uh, let's let's hear some of that. So Super. what are we going to start off with first? Um, the first is a track called Blood Shall Be Raining by a really new Faroese band called The Apocryphal Order. And uh, they just put out their EP, I think, this year, um, this summer. And so it's really fresh rock and um, I think it's maybe you could call it technical death or thrash mm-hmm. and so this is like their opus the song I think we're going to listen to it's like almost nine minutes yeah really cool song okay so, yeah. perfect okay so you'll only hear this on the Mind Compression Show on CJSR 88.5 FM <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, and we're back. And you're listening to the Mind Compression Show here on CGSR 88.5 FM with your host, the Gore Lord, and Josh. Josh, do you want like a metal name? Have we? Um, no. Do you have a metal name? No, no. I think you asked me before, and I yeah. have no metal name at all. It's, <laughs> it's really Josh. super boring name. <laughs> Josh Green. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so, Josh, what did we just hear? Um, the first song was uh, Blood Shall Be Raining by the Apocryphal <laughs> Order, New Fairies thrash technical thrash deathy band yeah really, really cool guys mm-hmm. nine minute master beat blast, and it doesn't and it doesn't beat. seem like nine minutes it yeah. went by really quick yeah i think so it's because like they really are good at like putting a lot of variety in the songs i think like, i mentioned to you when we were off there i think that they have the same like in that song they have the same riffs sort of repeated a number of times that come back to them mm-hmm. do variations and stuff really thoughtful songwriting i think really that's cool awesome guys. and then it was followed by synarchy another fairies band and they were playing it was the first track from their debut album. Um, the song is called Mirror Miles. Mirror mm-hmm. Miles, yeah. So. And you were talking about how the band um, is kind of separated, like, two, like, I don't know how many people are in the band in total, but half of them live in Denmark and then half of them live on the island. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's typical. And the Pharaohs, like, for young people, if you want to get um, an education, I think probably not related to the sailing or the fishing industry or something, which they have, like, sailor school there. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and then they do have a small university, but I think it's really typical for a lot of people to go abroad, especially to Denmark, because um, they're part of the kingdom of Denmark. So a lot of young people would go to Denmark to work and study and stuff. So so some of the band members in Synergy, for instance, are, are living abroad right now. So, oh. Yeah. Some are in the Faroes. So. Well, there we go. So that's that's interesting that maybe you wouldn't get here in Canada. Well, maybe if you went to the Maritimes. Mm, yeah. uh, but <laughs> typically, a lot of bands are in one area. Yeah. And sometimes you will get that in Europe where one band is maybe from the States and the rest of them are from Europe or, mm. or vice versa, right? Mm, yeah. So that's interesting that they kind of have to struggle to make ends meet and to have so. a living and then also to pursue music. Yeah, and then often, you know, for recording as well. Like, I think both of those bands recorded have recorded a- abroad as well. So there are some really good studios in the Pharaohs, but sometimes okay. people record uh, abroad as well. It's really common to go to Germany or Denmark, Sweden. Oh, okay. Yeah, recordings. anything, you know, kind of in the Scandinavian mm-hmm. area that's close. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, um... Do they do they listen to like a lot of American like I'm just gonna say Americanized metal so that they kind of like up to date with pop culture and stuff like that oh, or yeah. totally plugged in totally yeah. plugged in like uh, the thing that people were telling me a lot when I got there like people have excellent English of course young young people I talked to especially uh, superb English and it was really good for me um, but they're totally you know totally plugged in um, I think that when you're from such a small place and and people there told me that as well that like you have to know many languages right like mm-hmm. everybody speaks at least three languages like wow. minimum right mm-hmm. Danish Faroese and English and so but people are totally totally well connected to, you know of course the internet it's the same everywhere for that people are totally into TV like watching English TV all the time also yeah. of course watching Scandinavian shows like watching Swedish television and stuff like that <laughs> but um, yeah totally plugged into that and in terms of the and the, met- the metal scene I know they're totally listening to everything from all over the world they're really well versed in, in metal from everywhere including wow. America and then they they travel sort of or work in Scandinavian networks a lot and European networks because okay. of course it's easier to tour there and get to get connections made there. And that's neat. And like are there a lot of stores in on the island or is it more of like you're accessing music via the internet? I, I would have to say that like um, like the best music store there there's of course places that sell music. The best music stores there is their own label has a store. It's called Tut and it has pretty much only Fairies music. Oh, okay. Um, but for I'm guessing that most people must nowadays get the the majority of their music online mm-hmm. and stuff and hear about most bands online you know fairies friends on facebook just yeah. like everybody else just trading youtube links all the time and stuff like that that's so, neat yeah and these, some of the guys are on itunes they have their music on itunes and stuff so so they're putting themselves on, back online you know yeah <laughs> as well that is really cool and um you have lined up uh some tier yep and so you got to interview the one the one member. I know you wanted to probably interview the whole band. <laughs> but what was that like for you? Was that fairly surreal? 
in yeah. terms of <laughs> actually I could tell what happened is that um, I know that like not, I don't think any of the guys in Antir live uh, in the Faroes full time anymore I don't oh, think okay. I think they live in like, Germany and Denmark and maybe some other places but kind of spread out now and um, I, I actually I found out that while I was there two of the guys were coming back for a short time like for in between touring and stuff like that okay so um, the guitarist and uh, the drummer so anyway I was I thought it would be a good opportunity to try and snag an interview but I was uh, you know being uh, like a nerdy nervous guy or whatever I only really bumped into uh, <laughs> I've bumped into the guitarist once or twice like I yeah. saw him at a house party in downtown one night and stuff like that I just didn't feel like I should be like hey hey you want to do an interview yeah. you know, like, it's like he's you know like, it's relaxing yeah. leave him alone so yeah. anyway I contacted them after I haven't done the interview yet but um, Terry the, he's the Terry is the um, the guitarist he's agreed to do a, some sort of online interview very kind of him because they're about to go on a big tour okay um, yeah with moon sorrow and it's tour tier uh, moon sorrow and they're being supported by a really cool fairies doom band called hamfer oh, okay so, yeah. Yes. That's interesting. And that was the same Doom Band because um, I was asking you off air, uh, the kind of the ratio or the representation of women if it's such a small island. Mm. And you said that Doom Band had a one female member, but then now she's not in the band anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, Sucks. I know that like um, <laughs> that. Um, yeah, that they're on the on the upcoming tour. Their their bassist who was uh, was a girl named Titna um, now is um, they're being replaced on this tour at least for um, by a fellow named uh, Jen- Jenis who. Played plays in another sort of thrash metal band called Incurse from, oh, from okay. Faro, So, yeah. And other than metal, what do you think is the other kind of biggest uh, sub like genre of music? So there's metal that seems to be fairly prevalent uh, in the Pharaoh's Islands. So what's the other kind of biggest genre of music? Um, I think that it's funny to get, metal is big, but there's only, of course, like it's only a small portion of the young people there who mm-hmm. listen to it right so it seems big like it's disproportionately big because a lot of the bands if you know any fairies music at all it's probably one or two of the big metal bands like namely Tear Toys or the side project of Tear which is called Hell Yeah Rea. they've mm. also released an album but um, I think that the most popular genre in the music is in with the most uh, uh, genre of music in the islands as in with the most number of people is probably country music because probably everybody like f- you know 40 and older or something mm-hmm. like that it's kind of like I think rural Canada where I get yeah. the impression that everybody of a certain generation is really only interested in country maybe some folk or something oh so, okay that's interesting yeah, yeah so that's what I think as well but they have um, they've also got some like great like fairies as in fairies language like pop music pop okay. rock and stuff like that um, yeah so I would say that like country and pop they don't really call it country people will call it like dance music because it's played at dances I guess oh right? but, okay yeah. kind yeah. of like a mix of traditional music and yeah. oh, okay yeah. that's really neat yeah that's pretty cool yeah. okay so you brought some tear on the show so mm-hmm. what song did you want to play from them uh, it's called The Lay of Thrym it's the title track from their um, latest album so oh, yeah excellent yeah. okay and again you're listening to the Mike Impression Show here in CJSR 88.5 FM
Okay, and we're back. Okay, Josh, what did we just hear? Um, the last song that was on just now was uh, by a Norwegian band called Kvelar Talk, and the song was, uh, again, a really tough Norwegian name, Off or Not. Off or Not, uh, yes. Yeah, don't know what that means, but I know the band's name, I think it's like Chokehold or Chokeslam <laughs> or something, awesome. something that will like That's that. That's so awesome. And before that, I think it was uh, Tear um, mm-hmm. doing the title track, Lay of Thrym. Yeah, that's yeah. wicked. And you were telling me that um, oh, the album artwork for the, how do you pronounce that? I think that? it's like Krailer Talk. Yeah. yeah, it just starts with a K and yeah. V and, you know, just, that just, um, bad news when you're trying to pronounce that. But their album artwork is done by the same artist. Uh, done by the guy from Baroness. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the front man, I, I don't know, he has a really regular name, like John Cameron or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, the, uh, yeah, so it'll, it'll catch your eye if you ever see it anywhere. Um, it's really, really nice cover art. So. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And so from your trip, what were some of the main highlights for you? Um, shortly before I left, actually, I had the uh, good fortune to see a really rocking thrash, old school thrash band from the Pharaohs called uh, Incurse. And okay. um, I was uh, I was hoping to play something by them, but I wasn't able to get it worked out um, uh, by the yes. time of the show. But yeah, you can check them out. It's a really easy name, Incurse, obviously. But they are totally like the second you hear them, it's like old school Metallica or Megadeth or something. Oh, like, it's just right, like spot on, and with a, maybe a little rougher vocals, like not quite like Overkill or something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah, they're really cool guys. Um, that was a highlight. I got to see them at a bar shortly before I left. Okay. The only actual metal I'll show I was able to see while I was there. So, okay, very cool. Because we were talking off air, and I remember.